Today I want to talk about a reoccurring theme in my life, which is investing in your business. So I think for the longest time when I wasn't doing art full time or I was easing into doing it full time, I made a bunch of excuses as to why I didn't need to buy the newest equipment. I kind of made myself feel like I didn't deserve XYZ equipment. Even though I was doing my art business full time, I had to really convince myself to buy things and it was like a huge deal. And obviously money comes into it when you're not making a lot of money in the beginning. It's hard to buy all the flashy new gear and the things, which is totally understandable. When you do start getting income, invest that back in your business. If you are working a nine to five or another job on the side with your art business, use your work money for like life expenses and everything you make from your art business, put that back into your art business. So if you do a client commission for $200, put that 200 into a savings account so that when you need to buy new equipment, you can buy new equipment. Because I kid you not, the second I started investing in my business, everything changed for me. Like, although I am talking about a lot of equipment and programs that I've purchased along my journey to help my business. None of this is sponsored. This is just me and what has been working for me. So we're gonna go by category. So the first thing is equipment. I invested in a lot of equipment. Obviously, as an artist, I do a lot of my work on my iPad. I also design a lot on my laptop and I also edit my videos on my laptop. And before, I did have a MacBook Pro, but it was a pretty outdated one from 2017. It worked, it did the job, but it was like the basic of the basic. So it didn't have a lot of storage. It wasn't very fast. And I kept getting like the annoying notification telling me my storage is full. And my computer would always freeze while I was editing. It would be like that rainbow would pinwheel of death. <laughs> so it would one, take me really long to do average tasks, but two, I would just get frustrated and it would interrupt my flow and I wouldn't be able to omit and create how I wanted to create. Finally, saved up through client commissions and bought a brand new, MacBook Pro and it's 16 inch so the screen is larger meaning like I can see better when I'm designing I don't have to like crouch over like this to like look at the screen I also bought a keyboard and a mouse to help me I put my laptop on like a little stand and that way I don't have to go like this to type I can just type over here on a separate keyboard and I have a separate mouse here which helps in designing as well and that was like one of the best investments I've ever made because now I can design seamlessly I can edit videos in like a couple hours versus before it was taking me days to edit one video. The other day, I literally edited three videos back to back in like a couple hours. It's never been so seamless for me. It's just like one of those things every day I open my laptop and I'm so grateful and it really shows me like this is a visualization of my hard work and I deserve this. It's for my business. It's helping me do client work faster and better. So I also just obviously mentioned Adobe Creative Cloud. That is something I also purchased this year. It is a lot of money. If you are a student, first of all, take advantage of that because it's way cheaper but if you're not a student anymore, LOL. I didn't realize how expensive it was. I used to get it pirated. That's terrible because if you wanna do client work or you wanna get your work out bigger, you can't have pirated versions of things, but also when it upgrades, you don't get the upgraded version. You're stuck in the old version, which I hated. And then after that, I used to use the Creative Cloud subscription that came at my work with my old job. But then when I quit, all of a sudden I didn't have it. But luckily my sister is in film school. So I was able to log into her account for like a good chunk of like the year, but I kept running into login issues and it was just getting so frustrating and again, interrupting my creative flow. And I was like, honestly, she's about to graduate soon. I'm gonna need to buy it anyhow. I pulled the trigger, I bought it and it was the best thing I could have done because now I don't have to share it with anybody. I have my own login. If I ever wanna log in from my phone or my iPad, everything saved through the cloud. It is just amazingly seamless. There's also an option to just pay per program. So if you only use Illustrator, you just need to buy Illustrator and it's cheaper but me I use so many programs it's just way cheaper for me to just buy the whole creative cloud subscription definitely 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 worth it the next piece of equipment that I purchased was a silhouette machine and a Canon printer the Canon printer I didn't buy this year I bought it a couple years ago but I just wanted to talk about it anyways because it kind of goes hand in hand with the silhouette that I did buy this past year so the silhouette is essentially a machine that helps me print out all my stickers it die cuts them that way I have 
have control over how they get cut and how much quantity I can get made at a time. And as well as the printer, I print all my prints, greeting cards, stickers at home. And I just love having these things because when you outsource things, you have to wait for shipping, you have to pay for shipping. Sometimes they get messed up and then you have to send them back or get more and it's just like a whole process. Also, if I run out, I have to wait for more to come in versus I like being in control of how much gets printed, how often things get printed, and if something runs out, I can easily just fulfill them again. I also just feel like for me, it is cheaper in the long run to do it myself. I do save a lot of money because paper is cheap. Ink, when do you print a lot, it is pretty cheap relatively. So I just like the fact that I can also just save money at the same time. My newest purchase is something that I'm using right now, and that is a vlog camera, and I'm filming on it as we speak. I found that before I was filming on my phone, and I was using my phone audio, I was using my phone camera, and I was running into a lot of storage issues, which was preventing me, again, from filming a lot. Plus the quality, yes, it's great. I have like a 13 Pro, so the cameras are pretty good, but I just wanted something better elevated and something that I could just put in my bag and quickly film when I go out. I don't have to worry about storage, and it's compact. To be honest, as weird as it sounds, now that I spent $700 on a camera, I feel more inclined to want to vlog. And that's something that I'm gonna start doing on my channel is not only just these videos where I sit and talk to the camera, but I wanna do more vlog content of me actually creating my work, how I create my work, behind the scenes processes, and just like days in the life of an artist because I love watching that content, so I wanna try making that content. And now I can because I have a cool vlog camera. And I guess simultaneously, you probably seen from my first few videos versus now, I also bought this mic. I bought it on like Prime Day, so I got a really good deal on it. It's a great starter mic and it does the job and I love how my audio sounds. ASMR. I feel more professional when making videos. Just having this whole setup now, a camera, a mic, like, ugh. I'm sitting here, there's a table. This is my laptop stand. My mic is on here so it can be elevated and I have the mic plugged into my laptop here and recording the audio on QuickTime. And then here's my camera and I just feel like so professional with this whole setup right now. I love it. I really want to invest in my YouTube channel. It serves as a great way for me to fulfill my mission of helping other people who are building an art career similar to mine. It's also just a cool way to document my journey for myself in a couple years to see how far I've come. And who knows, once I grow my channel, like I can make money off of it potentially too. So it will pay itself time and time again. Now on to education. This is probably the biggest purchase I've made, period. And that was a course. I bought a course by Bonnie Christine, who is a surface pattern designer and she's probably like top industry leader in surface pattern design. So I purchased her course and it was a hefty price of 1,999 USD. And I'm Canadian, so when you convert that, that was about like almost 3,000 Canadian dollars for a course. I really contemplated, I'm like, is this worth it? And this is the time like I wasn't making that much money off my business. It had been maybe six months since I really started doing my business seriously. And so I was like, is this something I'm really gonna buy? It was probably one of the best purchases I made. Not only did I learn new skills, she helped me refine previous skills. And I know it's gonna pay itself over time and time again because I've already created two pattern collections and I'm about to start pitching and she talks about all of that in her course. And I loved it so much, I even bought her membership. So I'm paying 60 Canadian dollars every month just to be a part of her membership because now I have access to her community and every week they put out new content of surface pattern design. Knowing that this is an avenue that I wanna continue to pursue in my art journey, it really for me is a good investment to continue to hold me accountable, to have a community of like-minded individuals while also growing and expanding my skills and knowledge and just staying on top of different trends. If there's one thing you're gonna take from this video of things to purchase, it's education. I don't care if you're a student. I don't care if you're done school. Education is something that is so important no matter where you are in life. You need to be continue to educate yourself because things change, especially in art and tech. It's important to stay on top of everything. Another education thing that I invested in this year was a collision conference. I got a really good deal on Women's Day. They had a deal where you could get like two tickets for I think like $200. So me and my friends split it. It's a tech conference. So you're probably wondering what are you as an artist doing at a tech conference? <laughs> to be honest, Honest, coming from a marketing background and someone who has learned a lot about tech throughout school, I really love learning about new and emerging tech. I feel like personally it gives me a leg up knowing about this stuff and applying it into my business. So whether that's through, you know, how I'm marketing my business, how I'm filming, how I'm using AI, and how I'm using different tech trends into my art business, it gives me a leg up and I just love learning about it. And not only that, being at this huge tech conference, I was able to network and meet potential clients. I think conferences are great. Just make sure
sure they're aligned. Don't just go to random conferences. <laughs> so the next category that I invested in was business slash brand growth. This is kind of a vague title because everything technically could be business growth that I've mentioned so far, but this is more so talking about my website and other subscription based things. For one, I invested in my website. I used to have a Squarespace site and even like I think Wix or WordPress since I was in university and I had them for a while and I think I eventually let them expire because I was in a marketing job. I was like, I don't really need a website. I wasn't taking my art seriously. And I was like, why am I paying this extra money? I could just send people to my Instagram. So I let it expire. And for about a year, I did not have a website. And again, I was sending people to my Instagram, which is great for potential clients, but it is just not as professional. On Instagram, people are only seeing your recent posts. There's no way for them to really see all of your highlights of huge projects. I finally pulled the trigger and I personally hired a designer through 99 designs. I got really lucky. The person that I connected with was really understanding of my situation. I didn't have like $2,000 to spend to build a website. So I pretty much hired someone to consult me through 99 designs. My budget was $250 and he charged like $100 an hour. So we had two and a half hours and he really built the skeleton of my website. I told him what I wanted, my goals. And from there, I then took the time to build out the website, fill in the blanks and design it, which was the fun part, right? That $250 was a really good investment for me because now I have a professional website, which I love and it does the job and it's highly on brand and it's super easy to edit. And I'm proud to share my website to people when they ask. Whereas before I wasn't, it was really ugly. Through Squarespace though, I don't know if people know this, so I really wanna mention it. When I bought my subscription, I actually got a free year of Google Workspace. I didn't know it was free. I was gonna just buy it. Now I have an email that's hello at sapphirepeters.com. So it takes your domain, whatever your website domain is, and turns that into an email. And you can add whatever you want at the front. So I could have made it safra at sapphirepeters.com or info at sapphirepeters.com. And it's just way more professional than sending people your Gmail. Now I can send emails from my manager who is really just me. Sometimes clients take you more seriously knowing that you have representation and it's not you pitching to them, it's a manager. I haven't tested it out yet, so maybe I can do that in a video and tell you how it worked. So the other similar subscription that I bought is Flowdesk, which some of you may know, it's like a newsletter provider similar to MailChimp. I've used MailChimp in the past for companies that I've worked for and I like MailChimp, it's great, it gets the job done. MailChimp has a free option up to a certain number of subscribers. The only thing is, yeah, it is limiting with certain features and like integration that you can do. I personally wanted Flowdesk because a lot of artists that I follow use Flowdesk and I was just always so impressed with their newsletters and that costs me about $50 a month as well. It's so important to start a newsletter because let's say tomorrow Instagram decides to go down or their servers get hacked like it has in the past. Let's say you have a launch planned, your launch is going in the drain because now you don't have anywhere to tell people where to go or where to purchase it. But if you have a newsletter, it sounds weird to say, but you own your subscribers in a way, whereas like you'll never lose that. You always have that list of people who want to see your content. It's just like owning a social platform without owning it. I love this because it just allows me to build my community. I can share exclusive things with the people who really love me and like who really believe in my business. And the good thing is it grows with you and your business. Right now I have like 50 subscribers only, which isn't a lot, but it's more than zero. And those are 50 people who really love my work and care about me and want updates and want to see what I'm up to. But I just really want to encourage you today to invest in your business. You don't have to be rich as hell. I know obviously finances comes into play and I'm fortunate that I've been saving all my commission money and I have gotten a lot of good commissions this year, which I'm so grateful for. And it's because I'm constantly investing the money back into my business, which is allowing me to grow. So even if you make a $20 commission, Put that $20 into buying printer paper that's gonna help you print your art prints. Put that $20 into a savings account where you'll get interest on it. So when you have $100, you can invest in a mic or whatever it is that you need for your business. Because honestly, if you truly believe in your business and you truly want it to grow and you're serious about it growing, you need to put the money back into it. And this was so hard for me in the beginning because I'm like, this stuff is so expensive. Like a mic is so expensive, a camera is so expensive, a $4,000 laptop, that's so expensive. What the hell? But it has made the world of a difference and the things that you put in your business are gonna pay for itself time and time over again when you invest in yourself. If you talk, talk about people who have multi-million dollar businesses, they will tell you they were broke as heck and they took out loans from the bank and were in debt for years. I'm not saying do that. I'm not condoning going into debt and taking out loans at all. I'm just using that as an example to show that you need to put money into your business to grow and get bigger. That is all for today. I hope I really hammered into you how important investing is and I hope it was inspiring to hear a little bit about like the things that I invested in for my business. Thank you for watching and remember I'll be back with another video every Monday. Peace.